There's an interesting short passage in the book of Joshua, the 18th chapter, just the first three verses. <clears throat> the whole congregation of the sons of Israel assembled themselves at Shiloh. That was the first place where the tabernacle, the tent, portable church, uh, that tent was pitched. They gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. There remained among the sons of Israel seven tribes who had not divided their inheritance or obtained it, really. So Joshua said to the sons of Israel, How long will you put off entering to take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? Now, there were 12 tribes. One of the tribes was the Levites, and they did not have a, a specific inheritance of their own as a tribe. They were scattered throughout the tribes, teaching the law and so forth. They were the, the, it was from them that the teachers and the servants of the tabernacle, the temple, uh, the church, um, and the helpers to the priests were um, scattered throughout the land. And <clears throat> they were not to have a, re, uh, a retirement uh, kind of like everybody else and an inheritance where they could live. God said, I'm your inheritance and you live off the tithes of the people. So that really leaves, in a sense, 11 tribes. And of those tribes, six years had passed since they crossed the Jordan. They've been in the land of the promised land now for six years the land was subdued, meaning all the major combatants um, were defeated, the enemies were defeated, the Israelites had pretty well free uh, reign over the place, and this is now six years later, you got seven tribes. That's a majority. More than half of the tribes of Israel still haven't inherited and inhabited their inheritance. It's ridiculous. And so Joshua calls them and he says, why, why are you putting off going to your own inheritance? The uh, other versions say, why are you slack? Why are you tardy? Why are you procrastinating to in, go inhabit your land? Now, it's a good illustration here of the believer who has not moved on to sanctification, who is still uh, camped in a tent, not in the land that they really have should consider owning because God said, I've given it to you. Why not go ahead? And Joshua commanded them. He says, go up and possess it. The word possess here too means reach out and take it. It's not passive. It's not wait till God gives it to me or someone else gives it to me. It's go get it. That goes along with Hebrews chapter 12, 13, which talk about pursuing holiness or literally the sanctification without which no one shall see the Lord. And the word for pursue there is that same word. Go get it. It is not then a... Um, a just floating along kind of a spiritual quest. It is strike out after what God has already promised you until you know you have received it. You have obtained it. Now, there's a reproach to that. There's four things here that Isaiah or that the Joshua I think really makes clear. There's a reproach to the fact that they're six years into the promised land, they still haven't gotten their own property. That's reproachful for a couple reasons. One, they don't have any real huge opposition to going and getting it because it says the land's subdued. The giants are killed. The great uh, kingdoms and, and uh, uh, royal cities have been plundered and torn down. The Israelites won. What in the world, after six years, are they doing then, still living in a tent when they could be in their own property with... Uh, a, a building and barns and livestock and established. There's a reproach to that. 
And that's why Joshua rebukes them. Second, there's a reason for it. It seems to be one of just slackness, laziness, procrastination, um, love of leisure. That can, that can steal on any of us spiritually. That's why, for instance, Paul told Timothy, you stir up the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. Keep moving. Uh, don't let grass grow under your feet. Grow in grace. Don't just be a, become a squatter um, in some place where you don't belong. Get up to the higher ground. The third thing, there is a remedy for this. And Joshua pronounces it. He said, go up and possess the land. Do something. Move. Um, lots of times we tend to, I think, wait and just sit still and expect God to be the one to drag us on either to um, deeper understandings, growth and grace, or even the work of entire sanctification for a Christian to experience. Rather than live in that double-minded state, um, God is, he will prompt us, he will stick us and push us, but I got to do something. I have to seek until I find. So the remedy is get up, fold up this temporary tent you've been in for all this time and get a move on and go, go grab it, go possess it, go take it. And then finally, there is a right that I have. And what I mean there is I have a right to that inheritance, not for my own merit, but because God purchased it for me the work of cleansing my heart and making my heart pure and curing the double-mindedness that hinders me as a new Christian, Jesus has already purchased purity. Why am I living without it? I have a right to it. He commands me to seek it. And Jesus gave us that great promise in the Gospels. How much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So all I have to do is ask in faith, acknowledging what I've discovered in my heart that is a condition of double-mindedness. It's a hindrance to being all out for Jesus, being 100% sold to and submitted to God's Lordship in my heart and life, that His will is the uppermost thing to me, to do His will. So. We could call these seven tribes the reluctant remnant. Um, while others were enjoying their inheritance, they were still squatters in borrowed tents. Let's don't do that. By the grace of God, may we, quote, go up and possess the good land that God's already given us. Father in heaven, stir our hearts up to not be content, to with less than you've purchased for us. Help us press on to higher ground, and as Joshua said, go out and possess what God's already deeded to you. In Jesus' name, amen.